On to part two. I go to bed. People have been texting and calling me and they asking me what the fuck happened. I was like, I ain't about to tell this story six, seven times. I'm gonna make a text message and I'm gonna forward this or group chat this shit to people, right? So I get a bunch of people and I put it in there and I say, hey, look, leave me alone. It's like 4.30. Don't nobody fucking wake me up till tomorrow, you know? So my phone's going off with text messages. I'm like, oh, y'all thought I was joking. Turn that bitch off. I went to bed on the couch. I ain't going anywhere near Tina. And I just think my my last thought of the night was, how the fuck did she get that other night? And I wake up and I, I hear Smash Bros. That's a good way to wake up anybody in my age group. So she's like, oh, hey, Zach, you finally awake. I watched your code. It's like, my coat wasn't dirty. Oh, well, I vomited on it. Sorry. Like, you vomited on my coat while I was asleep? Yeah. Well, I was asleep. I was asleep, and you're already cleaning it, so I'm not gonna... I'm just too exhausted, mentally exhausted. I even feel mentally exhausted, even though I just woke up from looking at her based on what happened all last night. And I'm just like, hey, listen, listen. How much of last night do you about half of it she cuts me off like ironic why is that you cut me off at the halfway part of that sentence ha 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 but no fuck you hey tina i think you're a lightweight i don't think you're an alcoholic but i think you're a lightweight when you go to a party you drink one drink and nothing the fuck else oh i don't see why you can think you can tell me what to do i was like oh you're trying to play that game the me giving you advice is somehow a command bullshit game all right tina let me tell you exactly what happened that you don't remember. Oh, gosh. So I just unloaded on her. My baby was in the hospital. And I just said, hey, can y'all shut the fuck up? I was like, Michael. I was like, I looked in there. Was like, we heard the noise like, Michael. Michael, shut the fuck up. So it's coming from the bathroom. We go in there. I'm not going to lie. As far as sleeping in a tub goes, that man made himself fucking luxurious looking as shit. He had three pillows in three different positions. He had one cover as like an insulator inside the inside the tub that he could roll over the other half on top of himself. And he also had a tinier cover for like a twin bed or something directly on top of him. So he basically made himself a fucking human burrito and shit. Oh wow. I wish and I knew he had a sour apple taste. and he had a sour apple candle going on the back of the toilet and i'm just like man that, that actually looked pretty comfy i was like yeah i know right for conventions that's awesome i was like yeah I was like yeah yeah i know right I close the door though i have a fucking headache i was like you drank yeah and you you got a hangover yeah you so you were mentally stable drank got a hangover and she just got shit faced it's like hey man life is weird like that i don't know why you're complaining you can't get drunk you're just gonna die it's like well, that's true. So, eh, I'm not sure if that's a blessing or a curse, but either eh, it is what it is. Um. So, we all just start talking about everything, and she starts conferring with Michael's, like, and she just started asking me questions, like, "Look, look, everything he said is true, but I really just don't, I don't want to deal with you right now. Okay? Can you just, if you need to use the bathroom, I'm gonna go sleep in the bedroom." And I'm locking the door. And she just goes, you're locking the door? Yes. I have to pee. And she's crying. She's trying to fight back tears. So I help Michael get out the tub. I grab all of his pillow stuff. And we go in there. And uh, uh, we talk. And the door is locked. I don't remember what all we said, but it was basically on the lines of like, I'm putting my foot down if any shit like this ever happens again with her. I was like, thank you. I'm not about to disagree with you. Thank you. I'm the one who got fucked basically almost as hard as you and you got stabbed. So we laugh it off. We're cool with each other. I leave the room. She's in the hallway looking like a sad little puppy dog. And, and he comes out 
And he, he looks at her. He goes back in, slams the door, locks it. I was like, hey, look, uh, <laughs> what's so funny? I was like, no, it's just, I don't think I've ever seen a woman in a doghouse before. What's the doghouse? Like, you know what? You sh you're allowed to say that. So I explained to her the concept of the doghouse. It's when you fuck up so bad, you better not even dream of going in that damn bedroom. And mind you, it's like 10 a.m. I'm still groggy and probably going to take a, a fucking nap soon. So. Sounds uh, like Tiffany the nap. Fuck yeah. I was like, hey, look, the couch is pretty big. And also, you know, there's that beanbag. You might want to sleep on the beanbag. Well, it's my apartment. Why don't you sleep on the beanbag? At this point in time, I have lost all pretense of what I like to call sex civility, as in how a man at a bare minimum should treat a female and vice versa. So I said, because I'm bigger than you and you can't fucking make me. And I just walked the fuck off. Okay, like this woman has done so much in the past 12 hours that pissed me off. I'm like, I'm not even gonna entertain respecting you normally. I ain't gonna put my hands on her, like I said, but if there ever was a time and place that made me think about it, because the whole time when I was carrying her up that staircase, she was still playing with the knife. And sometimes she would point it at me and giggle. I went up four flights of stairs with someone swinging a knife at random and pretending to poke and stab and thrust at me. Like, this, you are at the, the end. It's like you're gonna get killed or raped. Yeah, it's, thank you. So I'm, I'm just sitting up here like, this is the point of the line that you don't cross where guys in there thinking, man, if you was a dude, I would not let you slide on this shit. We would have been boxing. You would have been thrown off the rail. That type of situation. So I'm just like, Tina, Tina, I don't even know where you got that knife. Where did you get that knife? Maybe you can fill in that blank for me. I have a knife. Tina, Tina, have you not felt your back pocket this whole time? And she looks at the, oh my God, I made a hole in my back pocket. And she looks at the, whoa, cool. It's like all black and wavy. Damascus blade. What? I'm not a dumbass. It's like, well, that's debatable. But no, the <laughs> type of blade is called Damascus blade. They actually named a type of weapon dumbass. It's like, so I spelled it out for her. I was like, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Uh, Cause I can do that. Uh, just uh, click the pick dump section. It won't take you out of the server. Now Damascus blades are very special because a lot of people, even in the modern era, don't actually know the exact process they use to make it. But what Damascus was doing was they didn't like how flimsy and how weak uh, steel weapons were in their in that era, which I think was like uh, 700 BC or 700 AD. So what they did was. They continuously folded and folded and folded and folded the blade. And when they did that, the durability dramatically increased despite the blade. And here you go. It dramatically increased despite the blades uh, length or width. It would be way more denser. You see it? Holy cow, that's a nice knife too. Yeah, but it creates the wave pattern because the the metal got layered on itself so many times over. So that's why, you know, Damascus blades are special and just naturally look cool. She had a two-sided one or two-sided Damascus blade style. I don't know if it was real or fake because you can't emulate the Damascus style in modern day, but novelty knives are actually pretty popular too because, well, some people just want to have a blue knife or purple knife, shit like that. I don't know where the fuck she got it though. I was like, now you found that knife around between two and 3 a.m. I think, which was the only time that we can't account for where you were. Do you know how that happened? She like dig up some graves or something. And I now I say this and she's smiling and looking at the knife on all sides and just staring at it. So I'm like, Tina! I was like, what? She's like, where did Damn, you get she still drunk? No, she was just bedazzled by the knife. So I was like, Tina, 
Where did you get that? Did you steal that from someone? Did you cut someone with it? I wouldn't stab anybody with a knife. So Michael opens the door and he just goes cough, cough. He doesn't cough. He just says cough, cough. <laughs> and oh, I'm just, the guy that got stabbed. <laughs> yeah, that's her boyfriend. She stabbed him. I was like, okay, well, I never stabbed anybody before today, I think. And I'm just like, Ugh. oh, dear God. Tina, you exhaust me. You stress me out. Now, this is the second time I've ever met you. I'm going to go to sleep. And don't do any of the knife flippy dippy shit I showed you. Okay? Because you're probably going to cut your fingers up or something. I'm not a child. I was like, yeah, well, last night disagrees. Now, she's mad like, that's not funny. But she's laughing while she's pissed at me, which a very special trait of mine. I wish I could control it more often. I make people who are mad about something I said about them laugh at the shit that I said about them. So, um, I end up, uh, just laying down and Michael comes out at some point in time. I don't know what time it is. The sun looks like it's about to go down. And Michael's like, why are you teaching her shit? I'm like, what? Why are you teaching her shit? I've been asleep for a bunch of hours, man. She's been the only one awake. Seriously? Yes. Hey, rise up for a second. So I I sit up upright on the couch and I look back and she's carving her lamp post with that knife. Not like angry stabbing or you know, being some joker. Oh, this is fun. I love stabbing. This gets my rocks off. She just sat there and she's whittling away at a wooden lamp post. I was like, wow. Should we say anything? Dude, I don't even think I'm going to say anything for the rest of it. It's like, I'm going to say something. So I walk over, I walk over to her and I sit at the counter table in the kitchen. I was like, hey, Tina. And she just looks at me, again, sad puppy dog face, but not crying. You sucked last night, but that doesn't have to determine the rest of your week, year, life. Okay? Yeah, I'm pissed. He's especially pissed. I got stabbed! I was like, y yes, we know. Okay? But listen. We're gonna be less mad, and maybe in a few years, I don't know, we'll laugh about this and tell people this story. Ironic. Very ironic. So, but look, here's what you need to remember, okay? We know you weren't trying to do what you did on purpose, all right? So, don't feel like we're going to hold this over you or be this mad at you forever. In fact, I'm probably never going to see you after today. And if I do, it'll probably just be in passing. Well, you said you were going to teach me knife stuff. Like, you remember that? Michael said that. And I was like, yeah, you remember that? I was like... Oh, yeah, you, you said you would teach me. It's like, oh, oh, okay. You know, I feel like at a base level, self-defense is for everybody. Someone should learn or everyone should learn it. I don't care if you got no arms or you just, you know, you've decided, I'm a tiny little baby girl. That's fine. I don't mean you can't learn to stab a motherfucker. So, if they, and I told them, look, if they can have zombie defense classes in universities, the dumbest shit ever, I can teach you knife basics. So Michael's like, hey, Zach's like, yeah. Ah. Uh, what? Why do you have a hunting knife? And exactly how do you know how to use that? That's a story for another time. Oh, gosh. And I'm not telling you that. I told him that. So... So I told her, like, look, well, first and foremost, I'm going to just tell you, respect your weapon. Always check for issues and always go to the people that can maintain it until they can teach you how to maintain it. Give a man fish. He feeds for a day. Teach him to fish. You feed him for a lifetime, blah, blah, blah. That type of situation. I also teach that shit to females about cars because I know too many women who just turn in their car when something goes wrong and then end up with literally a bill that's hundreds of times more than it needed to cost because they didn't want to learn 
literally the very, very easy, less than a less than $40 tool that can literally help you figure out exactly what's wrong with your car without even opening the hood in under 60 seconds. They look at me like I made this shit up. Like, no, it's been around for over 40 years. I promise. And, you know, she was willing to listen. Because really, that's the biggest determiner for me helping any female learn any type of thing that they normally associate with men. Are you going to listen? Are you going to give me shit? Are you going to back talk? That's the holy trinity for me. If you don't do two of those things, I'm Gucci. If you don't do any of those three things, I will love you for a lifetime and try to marry your sister. Okay, so... Uh... Brief intermission, since, you know, we might have a latecomer. Obviously, I'm going to edit this part out. Uh, so I'm going to go check on my food, and I will see you in about three minutes. Or if he pops back in early, let me know. I'll be able to hear my computer. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Back. Damn, that came out better tasting than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. I might be have to head out about fifteen minutes just to let you know. Fifteen or fifty? Uh. Okay. Well, we're nearing the end, which accelerates and gets scary and then funny. Um. All right. Well, I'll give him the play-by-play -play whenever he shows up. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Go ahead and wrap this up or get close to it. And, you know, hey, if you don't catch it all, you know, it'll be on YouTube or Spotify. You can catch it later. Um, okay. All right. So. <clears throat> when we last left off, let's see. Oh, yeah. So I told her, like, look, for the time being, outside of learning safety and to respect the equipment that you use, proper throwing techniques. Don't do spinning shit. And I'm going to tell you why. It looks cool, but it's extremely un-aerodynamic or, if anything, anti-aerodynamic. Because when you spin a knife while you're throwing it, the part that's more than likely going to hit somebody is not the blade end. It's the heaviest part. Because that's where most of the inertia and momentum is. So, more than likely, you're going to either knock them in the head with a piece of the hilt, or they're going to get lightly grazed when it smears, the butt end of it smears across their head and you're not gonna do any lasting damage. Because if you're throwing a knife, you're trying to do damage. Secondly, remember when throwing a knife, always make sure you have good balance and your arm does not do a lot of movement. 
because the faster you go, the more slight movement movements will affect it. So I pulled out my hunting knife and I said, watch this. Notice feet, feet shoulder width apart. And I'm going to stick this knife in the ceiling. You can't stick the knife in the ceiling. Like, motherfucker, don't piss me off for the rest of the day. <laughs> so I still perfectly still looked at her, didn't even look at the knife, pulled it out, boom, went straight up, one smooth motion. And then she was like, cool. It's like, what is this random fit of childlike wonder that you have? And Michael's like, dude, how are you going to get it out? He's like, the easy way. I'm going to let it fall because gravity is a thing. Also, small vibrations do affect anything that's been lodged into another object. I don't have to do anything and eventually it's going to fall. And I oh, shit you not, it looks so cool. I didn't plan it, but I pretended I did. I'm not going to lie. Right when I said that, the knife came out. I heard it. And then I turned around. And then I grabbed it with my back hand and I put it back in the holster I had inside my coat. He's like, oh, you're good at that. Like, yeah, I'm a G. I was like, nope, totally didn't know that was going to happen. I just heard the sound at the last second, but they don't need to know that. So I was like, yeah, well, maybe I can try throwing. And me and Michael like, no, what? Not in the house. This is an apartment. You know what I mean? So me and Michael look at each other and laugh because we both said those exact same lines at the exact same time. I don't know. It was just cool that we said the same thing like three times in a row. So I'm getting ready to leave. Mike's like, hey, man, it's crazy. And I was like, yeah, this is the one for the record books. I'm like, man, we're going to be telling our kids about this one or the fucking Internet or something. Again, the irony. So I'm just like and I'm just kind of sad. I forgot about this story up until like three weeks ago, but I end up leaving. And I just thought about something and I'm leaving. She's uh, watching me go outside. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I need time to fucking cool off. You're probably cool. But even if you're not, I'm not planning on seeing you too many more times after this. And as I'm leaving, I'm going and I'm going to the elevator. I'm just like, I get in there and she's watching me. goes like, hey, Tina. So she leans back out before she closes the door. Uh, why does a security guard have your phone number? Right. And she looks at me. She doesn't blink. And the elevator door is open. She probably remembers that. I was like, Tina, why does the security guard have your phone number? Love you. Bye. It's like, see, Aww. see, spider sense is going ballistic at this point. So I get in the elevator and I go downstairs and I'm going to talk to the security guard again. His shift ended. So no go. So I turn my phone back on. 38 text messages hit my ass all at once and five voicemails. I'm like, what are even, and I'm just thinking, what are even 38 people at that party? So anyways, um, I'm just like, okay, I'm not about to go through all this right now. They got the gist of it. I'll go through one by one when I'm just in a clearer headspace. You know, it's the weekend. I got a freshly clean coat. I smell like Downey. I'm not about to go party, but I'm about to head, take my ass home. Uh, So I get on the bus and then Tina texts me. He's like, hi, Zach, this is Tina. Tina, how the fuck did you get my number? That's not important. You're right. What is important is how did that Alabama security guard get your number? He told you about Alabama? I was like, yes, that's apparently where he's from. Hey, you know, this is something we need to just like talk about in person. I was like, no, it's really not, Tina. I was like, okay, she thinks she's going to put something incriminating down as evidence. That's what I'm thinking. Because my whole thought is she fucking a security guard. Literally, that's my thought process. So, I'm sitting up here on the bus and just like looking angry as fucking shit. And people looking at me like, why is this dude making all these faces? He on some type of drugs? And I'm just like, and then someone says, hey, young man. Yeah. 
You okay? Your uh, face looked kind of like my husband before he got a stroke. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I laughed a little bit. And so the people on the bus were like, no, I'm, I'm fine. I just, I had a weird night with a drunk white woman. So I shit you not, from the back of the bus, I heard, man. I was like, oh, you got some stories to tell? Hell yeah. Well, I mean, I'd love to hear, but this is my stop. But uh, yeah, stay safe. Hey, you stay away from drunk white women. It's like, yeah, I will do. You know, I just, my day's turning positive really quickly. So, eventually, a week passes, right? Now I'm coming out of my apartment and I just hear from the circus, are you sure he's on this floor? The fuck, that sounds like Tina. So, I get to, I start getting in the elevator, right? And I was like, there's Tina staring at me. Hi. Well, this is familiar. I'm going to get in this elevator you can't see from your vantage point now. No! I'm like, yes! And I get in and I see a knife fly by and I just hear poof! Oh, wait, that sound doesn't come through. Oh, well. Well, let me, let me try turning off noise suppression. I just hear poof! Nope, still nothing. Oh, well. Basically, she threw a knife so hard, it dented and popped a little bit of an emergency fire extinguisher. I shit you not, all I saw was like a sea of what looked like semen, concentrated bukkake gangbang semen spraying everywhere in the hallway. And I'm at the elevator door close to this fire extinguisher, so a little bit of it got on me, and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, oh no, no, no. So I hear Tina come running down, I'm like, nope, nope, I'm getting the hell out of here. And she slips and falls on some of the shit that was gooping out of the fire extinguisher, and I just fucking laugh. <laughs> oh yeah, cause she gonna she gonna stand up and she's covered in white sticky goo and just so many puns alone. So mm -hmm. I'm freaking out in the elevator and I get to the bottom. Now there's no security in my building, so I just walk out. But I didn't realize how fucked up I look. So some of that shit got on me, right? But not enough to like coat me. So from the front, it looked like. I lost a fight with a sperm donor and I'm in this hallway laughing and people in the, the ground floor just looking at me and they like freaking out because here's this dude laughing. They heard a loud explosion and I'm covered in white and I got white goo on the front of me. And I'm just like, this is fire extinguisher, just so you know. And they, and they just nod their head like, yeah, sure, motherfucker. So I start leaving, right? And... I think I was going to White Hand Pantry back when those were everywhere and 7-Eleven hadn't truly taken over. And next thing I know is boom. I hear you know, like the, the dude in the counter started laughing like, what's wrong? <laughs> this chick slid into the window. I was like, slid into the window. It's a fucking Tina. So I go in the other aisle and I look out. Is that your ex-girlfriend? I was like, no, hell no. So Tina comes in and she's like, I know you're in here. I was like, ma'am, why are you carrying a knife? I was like, ah, fuck. I was like, okay, this it's not one of those situations. It's not a lazy man stick up or some shit. I was like, Tina, we're going outside. Listen to me. I didn't do anything, man. He was just on the bus with me. I was like, the fuck? The security guard. Yeah, you fucked him, right? I fucked a guy who only has 10 teeth. Ew, what the hell? <laughs> Now, she says it like a question. I was like, but I said it like a question too. Yes. No. We're both from Alabama. He's my cousin. I'm sure you'd fucked his cousin. And she looks at me because I'm still making that face like, do you really want to accuse me of doing something that I wouldn't think of doing with my cousin while I'm holding this knife? Would you like to explain to me what happened? Yes, yes, I would. Look, okay, we're just from there, all right? We don't do anything to people. I was like, why did you think that was something worth hiding? We're up north. Yeah. We're from Alabama. Yeah. Why do you not sound country, though? I was like, oh, well, my mom was from Illinois originally, so, you know, I kind of have both accents. It's like, why is this something to hide, though? He's not hiding. It's like... Everyone knows Yankees talk shit about Southerners and stuff. 
I was like, okay, let me just peel back some layers for you. You're a white girl. Unless you say, I am a devout, devout, loving Christian or Catholic, most people do not make an assumption you're a fucking Republican. Like, at all. They're the only ones who get stereotyped into being with the GOP. You don't have a giant sign on your face, forehead, or on the internet that says, Jesus, love Jesus, God's favorite, blah, 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 and all this other shit, do you? Like, no. No one's gonna just know you're, uh, 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 you, you fuck with the GOP or whatever. I don't even understand what exactly you are running from or trying to hide from. Well, I don't know. I just want to be picked on being from myself. I don't even like the Republicans, man. You know what they did to my mama's house? That's why she came back up here up north. The mayor sold our stuff to some giant corporation. It's like, and I'm just like, why are you laughing? Like, oh, I've never seen this accent. It's fucking hilarious and adorable. Well, look, I just want you to try me on that knife stuff. It's like, I don't really think you need my help. Like, what do you mean? You threw a knife so hard it pierced a fucking metal fire extinguisher. Yeah, yeah, I did do that. I was like, okay, look here, woman. I'll teach you some basics. Three months later, shit got weird. Michael calls me and was like, hey, can you stop teaching her? I was like, I stopped teaching her two months ago. Are you serious? Like, yeah, what's going on? Uh, nothing, I'll catch you later. So Facebook status got changed to single. I was like, oh, shit. So, Michael, uh, what the fuck happened? Bro, she keeps running around the house saying poke, poke, slash, and occasionally, Pokemon, you're a mon. But she's doing it with her finger, her nail, ink pin caps, ink pin tops. Also, I'm pretty sure there's some extra cut marks in the fucking ceiling that weren't there before. Uh, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of something I know I wasn't about to stick around. I was like, oh, oh, well, I'm not going to try to pick her up. Like, dude, I know, you know, she's, she's becoming crazy. Like, eh, she's not that bad. Listen to what I said. Remember what I said? Like, yeah, you just said it like five seconds ago. She was doing that by the hour. You didn't tell her to get therapy? You think she fucking listened? I was like, okay, well, you got yourself out of a very weird situation. Shit you not, two days later, she calls me up. She tells me that it's my fault the relationship ended. And I'm just like, Tina, no, it's not. No, it's not. Well, if you hadn't shown me this knife stuff, who wanted me to teach him this knife stuff? You, me... I was like, okay. Did Michael have a problem with it? No. Okay. Didn't he tell you to go to therapy? How do you know about that? It's not important. Listen, go to therapy because something is off in you and you don't want to be considered the crazy girl when you're just starting adulthood. That shit will follow you. So, eventually, Tina... <laughs> Catches me going to my parents' house. Right? I didn't know she had a car, what it looked like. But there was a car parked in the front. Thought it was one of the neighbors because we have very close houses. Didn't really give a shit. My parents parked in the driveway. And it's around 930. I'm leaving. She gets out that car. And she has a book bag on. I was like... Tina, how the fuck do you know where my parents live? I don't. I was following you. Why were you... Cuts me off because you wouldn't pick up your phone. What a fucking stalker. Literally, yes. So I was just like, okay, okay, Tina, listen. If you, try, if you want me to try to help you with Mike, I don't think there's much I can do, but I can try something. But you have to understand, the problem isn't what I taught you, it's what you do with the information. Look, I had a man, I had a good man, and he was tall. I was like, Tina, you five foot, everyone's taller than you. 
shut up, that's not funny. And then she starts laughing while she's telling me that's not funny. So I'm just like, okay, Tina, Tina, listen, I don't know what she thinks about to happen, but if you try to use my own techniques against me, I'm going to clown you without even touching my knife. Okay. You're taking this too far. Like you have many other things involved in this entire situation. You need to calm the fuck ass down. I don't know why I added that ass part. I, in hindsight, I regretted it. It sounded weird, but I did. And it's like, I need to calm down. It's like, oh, yep. Yeah, she's going borderline. She is now officially crazy. When you tell a crazy woman in a joke, ah, you crazy, or please calm down, and they go ape shit, they're too far going at that point. Oh, man, this is like, leave, just run. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, but I'm at the same time, I'm like, five foot stubby motherfucker. And my parents' house is right behind me, and she on my block. I'm Gucci. Ain't shit gonna happen to me. Right? So, I'm just like, look, Tina. You ain't gonna shit you not. Knife immediately starts flying by me. I'm just like, you actually, and then I turn around and I duck because she had another one. I was like, I just yelled, do you have a book bag full of knives? Maybe. So then she runs past me and she goes to pick up those two knives. She just had the two knives. Oh, God. Now, I know I should be taking this serious, but at this point, I started laughing. I was like, Tina, Tina, you don't want to do this. Why is it funny to you? Uh, because your angry face is adorable, even though you're trying to kill me. Or I'm not trying to kill you. I'm going to stab you in the back of your legs and watch you bleed and punch you a bunch of times. It's like, so you want to do to me shit that I've taught you to do to people? Yeah, you get a taste of your own medicine. Well, isn't stabbing me how you stabbing someone how you got into the situation? And she just starts crying in my front lawn. Now my parents sleep, and the front of my house is brick, so that sounds not going through. I literally just walked off. The end. She's like. Yeah, I went to the bus stop. I saw the cops go to the go to my block. I didn't investigate. I didn't give a shit at that point. I honestly didn't. Now, here's where I get fucked at the last minute, though. So, I bump into the girl I was trying to talk to at that party. We'll just call her Ashley because that's a very generic name. And I tell Ash, and Ashley's like. So you taught a woman self-defense and just to get her arrested? I was like, what? Yeah, you did. That's like, no, no, I didn't. I'm reevaluating what I think about you. He was like, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. Do you understand she stabbed a guy and then got obsessed with the concept of poking and stabbing people? And she learned that from you, right? She did not learn to be obsessed with stabbing people. She learned the techniques from you, right? Yeah. And then you got her arrested. She threw two knives at me. And I shit you not, this is what she said to me before she walked off. Zax, you're a guy. What that's supposed to mean? It, it means so many things and yet nothing at the same time. Like watching a star die from earth and I never saw her again and I never saw Tina again so Tina didn't cut me but she found a way to cut someone out of my life that I liked she manipulated them mm, well yeah but it was more the lazy type so everyone and their mom had five or six different versions of this story right but also people were talking to Tina from jail and she did make bail you think she gonna sit there and say, oh yeah, I went and stalked Zach's and threw two knives at him? Fuck no. She told people some wild outlandish shit and I use that term rarely. Some genuinely outlandish shit like me and her were getting close while I was teaching her, but I wanted to stay with Michael and she started and she threw a knife at me because I tried to make a pass at her one day. I'm like, she got arrested in front of my fucking house. 
that I used to live in. What a fucking liar. I hear people do that. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. This is before the internet had Me Too and cancel shit. This was pure, genuine, I believe you, I stand with her. Not based on logic and reality, but based on me and her both don't have a penis, so she can't be lying. And I'm just like, this is the true power of manipulation. I gave her, she has a skill stronger than any Damascan blade, sharper than the edge of any lightsaber. And yet she wanted knife skills. And when I say 90% of the people who felt, who heard from her didn't believe me, I mean, if Michael didn't end up in the text chain where people were shit talking me, none of this would have got corrected. She didn't stab you while you were driving. Bitch, here's the scar. Bitch, here's the medical report. Also, if I called the cops on her, because we got into a quote-unquote physical altercation, why come she ain't got no marks on her? Now, mind you, I am not a six-foot trend killer at this point. I am not going through any type of extremely dramatic shit over the traditional fighting bullies, usually two-on-one, because they're bullies. And she's still half my weight, half my size, half my everything. And I'm, and then, and, and that thought didn't occur to nobody until Michael said it. If they got into a fist fight or they got into a fight and she had to pull out the knives, why are there no marks on her? Now, in closing, here's why I remembered this story about three weeks ago. Because Michael texted me and told me she got out of jail. Apparently, she actually didn't get that much time. But she kept getting yeah, she's, she's a woman. <laughs> yes. She didn't even get, she didn't get nowhere near the maximum sentence, but she kept getting into trouble in prison and getting extensions. She got two extensions. Now, and he was trying to tell me like, bro, you might want to watch your back. I was like, she don't know where the fuck I live. Yeah, but you only live about five or six blocks. You live less than a five minute drive, so to speak, from the house you grew up in right now. I was like. Oh yeah, I do. Will there be a part three? We don't know. Questions? Oh God. I'm just glad she's out of your life. You should totally, if you, is this going to be like a video podcast or something? It's going to be audio and video. If you're going to have like a picture, you should totally have like Tina from Bob's Burgers and put like a fucking knife on her photoshopped. Yeah, I was actually thinking about putting up Damascan blades too, because, well, even though she said, I'm not a dumbass, they don't make stupid knives. That's ironically not the first time I've heard someone hear me say, or anyone say Damascus blade or Damascan steel and think I'm calling them a dumbass or thinking that it's made up because it's called dumbass steel. I was like, wow, the English language has truly deteriorated. Oh, man. So, yeah. With that being said, this brings this episode of Life Story to an end. Uh, uh, Joey, I always appreciate you coming through. If you ever want to do anything in the future, or like I said, need help with anything, hey, we're just a call away. And uh, yeah, uh, now with that being said, do you know which part you want on your channel or you want me to pick? Uh, you could pick. Okay, what I'm going to do is um, I'll finish the uh, video version, get the edit in, get the splits in. Maybe put in some um, non copywritten music in the background on really low. And you give an intro to it on your channel. And then you show the video. And make sure you label it part one at the end. And then uh, the following week, I'll put it as part two. Do a scheduled uh, or a scheduled premiere type situation. And uh, yeah, that'll make that stuff up. Um, the podcast topics for the week haven't been decided. Plus, you know. Uh, the way that goes, I can record with anyone. It's just a matter of when do they have time and then splice everyone together. We might do something like that. And uh, yeah, you know, if you want to pop in on anything, just say the word. Sweet. All right. I know I do Joey stories on my channel. You know what that is? Yep. Yeah, I haven't done one in a while, but I got some other fun ones coming up. Cool, cool. All right. Well, that so being said, we will see you guys when we see you guys.